Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ScreenFlow. So ScreenFlow is a screen recording and video editing software available only for Mac at the moment. I'm using ScreenFlow version 9. However, this should work for most versions. I've been using this program for several years uh, to create hundreds and hundreds of tutorial videos and screen recorded videos. And it's for the most part stayed the same. So the guide that I give you now should work from here to previous or future versions for the most part. And when you open up ScreenFlow, you should go to File, New, or this menu should automatically open up, kind of like your welcome startup screen. So you do have your welcome options, like just some help websites and tutorials. But your main section is the new recording section, which is what I'm using right now. You can see my entire desktop. So you have a couple options in here. You have Record Desktop, and you can choose from where. The reason this is an option is because sometimes you can plug your phone or other tablet devices in and you can record those. So you can record your iPhone or whatnot in here. And you can also choose to record video as well from a built-in web camera and that'll show whatever your web camera is pointing at on here. So you can, it'll, it'll come out in two separate layers when you do that. So you can edit them both in the corner or whatever you want. The next thing you have is the audio. So right now I'm using a custom microphone plugged in. Uh, you can use the default microphone, which I guess I don't recommend. It's not the best, but using a USB microphone or some sort of microphone interface is fine. And you also have the option to record the computer audio, which is very useful. So whether that's uh, the clicking sounds or sound effects that are playing from the actual computer or internet or a, a video that's playing on, on your computer, that's how you're going to get that. So once you click, you also have this little option here, which is to only record a portion of the screen. I don't use that too much because you can always edit that later. And you also have some different options on frame rate and stop recording segment as well. So that's if you wanted to set a timer for a certain recording, like let it record for 10 minutes and then automatically finish. I don't really touch this stuff too often. But your basic thing here is the record button or the shortcut shift command two is really useful to know to start a new recording. So once you click that, I'm already recording, so it's not going to let me. But once you click that, it'll give you a countdown of five, four, three, two, one. And then it, everything that you do will be recorded. And then once you press shift command two, it'll stop your recording and open up the actual screen flow. So in this case, I'm going to open up a recent document that I recorded just to show you how it works. So here is a recent document that I just recorded. This is what you'd see after you just finished recording. And in this case, I was working in Adobe Premiere Pro. You, you see two things on the layout here. So it's pretty easy to read this layout. This is what you recorded. So your desktop or whatever. This is the audio that I recorded. You can see the spikes, the pauses I took, and this is the video that I recorded. So there's two layers here. You can easily drag these layers around and there's always new layers that you can create for adding text and whatnot over top. On the right hand side, you have your kind of like project media. So these are the pieces of assets. We have the audio recording and the video recording that we did. And those are in sync together, but you can also add music and uh, JPEGs, logos, whatever else you want here, drag those into the timeline. And you also have some tabs here. So you have your video properties tab. You can scale in or down on something. I'm just using shortcut command Z to undo just like in any other program. Uh, you can adjust all types of positions, opacities of whatever layer. And they do give you some video filters too, if you want like to make it black and white or adjust the saturation contrast. There is some decent filters here. It's not as powerful as something like an Adobe Premiere Pro or an Adobe After Effects, but for the most part for screen cast, screen recording things, you don't really need too many crazy filters. You also have audio adjustment. So in my case with my setup, I just have to, I adjust some things about the mix. And if you want, you can adjust the volume and whatnot. 
And there is audio effects such as some basic uh, background noise removal, audio filters if you want reverb and stuff. But again, I don't really play too much in the processing effects in ScreenFlow. And you also have some really cool options in ScreenFlow for callouts and mouse things. So a lot of people ask me, how is your mouse so smooth? Or how are you moving the mouse with that blur? So those are just features that happen in ScreenFlow when you record. The cool part is uh, the ScreenFlow recognizes where your mouse is. So you can add these actions onto your video. So for example, when I edit my tutorials, the first thing I do is I just kind of go through, listen, and I create cuts where I need to. I delete things where I need to. And if I ever want to highlight anything, just make sure your screen recording layer is active and you can add actions, which you'll see will pop up as these little kind of highlighted pieces of tape or whatever you want to call them. And for example, I can do a mouse pointer zoom or I can do a radar effect on the click. For the most part, I'm doing these kind of actions, the callouts, not necessarily the mouse pointer actions. But for the callouts, I can add an action. You can see it'll show me exactly where the mouse is. I can zoom in or out, and I can choose the background opacity level. So this can come really in handy when I want to quickly point something out where my mouse is, especially for when you're doing tutorials and you want people's eyes to pay attention. The other parts that you have are, you can do different types of callouts. So foreground window will call out the entire foreground window. Freehand will let you call out a specific section. So I can just call out whatever specific panel that I want. And you see I, I added a 0.2 second build in and out duration. So it gradually zooms in and gradually zooms out. And if I want, I can move that strip around. I can copy and paste that call out several times for easier editing. If I wanted to keep calling out the same section or I can delete them or adjust the, the length of them. The other thing that you can do too is showing keystrokes. So whenever I push a button and it doesn't show all keystrokes always, but like certain modifier keys like shift you'll see are being held. I can lower the width of that. I can drop the, the backdrop or whatever. And showing keystrokes is really useful to so that if you are doing an instructional type of video, people can see what you're pressing. You also have the option to add text. So oftentimes in my videos, I'll leave a little watermark of my website. And you see that just pops up as a layer. And I can simply adjust the backdrop or color and properties as I like. and move it where I like. And what I like to do is lower the opacity a bit. So it's just kind of like a watermark where I want it. And you see that text graphic, I can extend it over the entire project. So I can keep that watermark and the layers are working just like they would in Photoshop or any sort of program. The top layers get seen first and the everything else gets seen like from ascending order or descending order the top first and the bottom layers after. Some other really cool things you could do are cropping. So if I did want to crop this layer, um, not only can I scale it, but I can crop it. If I just hold control, this comes really in handy sometimes. I can crop out whole sides. So if for some reason I did only want to show this part of my screen, I can crop into that only and add whatever else graphics I want or just kind of scale out of that. And you also have annotations that you can create. So sometimes I'll use these, but not too often, but sometimes I'll point something out in this way. And you'll see, I can change it to like an arrow and I can choose the color, but you'll see that'll pop up just like, just like a text graphic. That can be useful sometimes when the callouts don't work and I want to point at something specifically. Not using it too often, but something I use but beyond that, the main thing you're going to do is basically go through your video like I do. Whenever you do a screen recording, you're bound to mess up sometimes unless you're like a one take, great one take person. 
uh, I go through, I play the whole video. A really useful tip is pressing L will let you play it in double time. This is a, save you a lot of time scanning through the footage. I basically watch the whole video. I highlight everything and press T as a shortcut for cut. But you also have all your tools in the bottom left here if you wanted them this way. Uh, and you can zoom in and out of stuff too if you're trying to get exactly on a cut. And you can press delete. And if you ever want to, for example, if I delete this section and I want to bring these back together, I can kind of ripple delete just like in Premiere Pro or something. Just click on those middle portions and delete them. So basically what I do is I watch the whole video, I delete out and edit out the segments where I messed up or the segments that I didn't want, especially because when you're screen recording, sometimes a, an email will pop up or a phone call will pop up and you pause for a second, you let that go away and then you continue and you just remember to go back when you're screen recording and cut those parts out. But basically I watch through the whole video, I do my thing, editing, I narrow it all down. And then usually I'll go back around a second time, watch the video again, but that time add all the mouse callouts, add all the annotations and text that I want, which is an extra step. It is an extra step. Um, you might not have to do that for the type of video you're creating, but it's kind of like a finishing polish. Just as a final note, you also have some other kind of visual things like here is showing you the audio levels, left and right track, you also have the, the timeline. I can hide layers or mute layers, and you can arrange layers easily and just drag them like that. But once you're done editing, you can go to File, Export, and here you can just choose a name, where to save it, and how to export it. So there's a bunch of different settings. Um, if your screen resolution is different than 1920 by 1080, like mine's pretty big if it's 100%, but I choose to do it at standard 1920 by 1080 size. I remember when I was using a MacBook, it had a weird resolution and I had to get some side plugin so that I could put it in 1920 by 1080 and not letterbox. But that's a side note. Use motion blur is how I get that smooth motion blur on the mouse that a lot of people always ask about. So that can be a fun one. And I just keep it at these normal settings, but you can choose these manual settings as well. So they have web high and you can customize them too if you want. So if you wanted a certain uh, audio rate or whatnot, basically uh, I find web high is, is pretty fine. Automatic is pretty good for me. It tells you the estimated file size. So this is just a short, five minute video or so, so it's not gonna be too big, but do keep in mind if you're recording like two or three hour Zoom calls or Skype calls, recording those might become pretty hefty files. I mean, those are two, three hour video files you might be talking about. And sometimes I've had to export them in really low quality just to get them delivered to a client or a consultation. But once you export, you click export, it'll start loading and finish in once it's done you'll see it in your desktop and you can just save your you'll get two files and you can just save your screen flow project file and then you'll also have your exported file so i always try to save my project file so i can always go back in if i need to re-edit or recut things with the layers but it's a very simple program really once you get the hang of it you've got your main program window you've got your layers you just play and cut and delete trim down your screencast and annotate it and polish it up how you like and then export it. So I have been using this program since some of the first uploads on my channel in 2011. Definitely recommend it. It's been pretty great throughout all these years. I believe it is Mac only. That is one thing. So if you're working on Windows or something, you can look into QuickTime or other or OBS or other alternative screen recording softwares. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. My name is Justin Odisho. You can check out my channel for a lot more helpful content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.